Hey everyone, sorry if this video seems a bit choppy, it's quite early in the morning, it's really humid, and every second that I'm spending doing this is a second that I'm not playing this. If you know me in real life, you'll know that my favourite computer game of all time is Deus Ex Human Revolution, which is a prequel of what many consider the best game of all time, um, 2000's Deus Ex. Human Revolution is my favourite game of all time because it has this unknown quanta to it. This sort of X factor. The story of the Deus Ex universe is quite simple. It's basically from 2027 onwards, um, cybernetic augmentation of human beings is a reality. Um, and obviously it has a real sociological and political and philosophical impact upon the world. Gradually, obviously, you know, military industrial complexes seize upon it and given sort of diminishing resources and strife throughout the entire globe, it all comes to play in terms of people who have these abilities and able to become players on, you know, this grand chessboard. A big factor in the series is also um, sort of machinations of the Illuminati. The Illuminati are actually a reality in the Deus Ex universe, and they are obviously the puppet masters behind everything that happens. Each game focuses on um, a particular augmented person. So in the original game, it's someone with um, nanotechnological augmentations, a guy called J.C. Denton. Then there was the sequel to that, which is set in the 2070s, um, which is about an advanced model of Denton um, called Alex D. And then there's these prequels, and these are set in the 2020s. And they focus on a mechanically augmented um, agent called Adam Jensen. Jensen's become quite iconic, and it's because he's incredibly well-written, he's incredibly charismatic, he's amusing, but he's also tough, and he's got like a very chewy moral centre. This game is good. I was very worried about it when it was announced. You would think that being the immediate sequel to my favourite game of all time, that I'd be very happy that it was, you know, in production. But the problem is, you know, it does have the feeling that it was obviously greenlit because of the critical and commercial success, which is no wrong thing. I mean, it's to be expected. You know, um, Human Revolution had a far less, you know, grand budget to it. You know, it was a risk because of the fact that um, Invisible War wasn't a success at all. Um, and, you know, there was like a, you know, nearly a 10-year gap between the games, between Invisible War and Human Revolution. And because it's a prequel, and, you know, prequels can be a bit hit and miss. But it worked, and it was a wonderful, wonderful game. And despite its faults, I love it. I genuinely love it. So a sequel to it, had to do a lot to impress me. And on the um, some of the Deus Ex forums in the years since Mankind Divided was announced, I, I was one of the few sceptical voices, or at least one of the ones who wasn't, you know, willing to instantly buy into the hype that was developing around it. You know, I wanted it to be good, but I wasn't necessarily just going to assume it was going to be good. There's something about Human Revolution. It has a lot of bugs... Some of the character models are weird, like sort of, you know, weird proportions in hand sizes and, you know, head to shoulders and stuff. Not in all characters, but in some of the, particularly sort of the um, the NPCs, um, a lot of the character models are reused. But again, it didn't have much of a budget. So stuff like that is to be expected. And in terms of the main cast of the game, the design of them and more importantly, the writing of them is superb. When characters were starting to appear for Mankind Divided, it just seemed like there wasn't there, there wasn't the same sort of distinction amongst them. Um, they were distinct in the sense that you can tell them apart quite easily, and they are very you know well formed characters. But there was nothing as compelling about them. Um, in Human Revolution, you have, you know, your pilot, Farida Malik, who is arguably one of the best characters in gaming history. 
Um, you know, there's a reason she has such a sort of a formidable fandom around her. And then, of course, there was Frances Pritchard, who was um, Jensen's community ex- um, communications expert, and also his main foil in particularly the early part of the game. They have this repartee, which is fantastic. You know, they they're constantly goading one another. And I wasn't seeing that from Mankind Divided's um, pre-release material. And now that it's arrived, I am pleasantly surprised, um, particularly in terms of like um, some of Jensen's support staff. Um, he's now working in the, in the original game. He actually works for um, a biotech company, which is Seraph Industries. This is actually probably the first time I've done a video where it's appropriate for me to wear one of these T-shirts. Um, in Mankind Divided, he's now working for Interpol. And there are some interesting characters there. There's there's a woman called Aria Argento, which is an interesting name because it's one letter switched out with um, Azia Argento, who is... Um, uh, she's a writer and director, and she's the daughter of you know the legendary Dario Argento. She's quite interesting. She's augmented like Jensen, um, but she she's not been cleared for field duty, so she's serving as Interpol's the branch of Interpol they work at. He, she's their quartermaster. Outside of the Interpol task force, Jensen's main street contact, and he's essentially the limb clinic um, in the first part of the game. Uh, it's a guy called um, Collar, and he's a very, very cool character. I really like Collar. Collar's kind of a chancer in the fact that he's involved with the um, underworld in Prague, where the game starts off. He does the wet work for augmented people like Jensen because there are no clinics anymore. He's just an interesting character. He's basically this. He was this child genius, and he's you know now in his twenties. And even though he is incredibly smart, he is a genius. He's not the sort of person to put it in your face um you know he's just getting on with what he does he's also got a real sort of um sort of uh, punk or metalcore aesthetic going on which is really really cool he looks great and that is one thing i will say for mankind divided the character models are superb um everyone looks distinct from one another um the little touches in terms of what people are wearing if they've got little emblems on them um, the various cybernetic parts you can see on their bodies it's all incredibly well realized which is kind of weird because overall the game design isn't anywhere near as good as human revolution one of the things i love about hr is that it has this really bizarre color palette to it it has this yellow hue to it this sort of gold aura which is a very conscious choice on the part of the design team in my mind, at least, it has almost this sepia tone to it. So it's a prequel. You're looking backwards in the um, the in-universe, in-universe chronology. That's very appropriate to me that they've done that. It adds a slight surreal quality to it, but more than anything, it's it's very ethereal, which is, again, appropriate for a series that talks a lot about um, transcendence, transcendence of what it is to be human. Mankind Divided doesn't have that. It has a very, very straightforward design aesthetic to it. You know, lighting and everything is pretty much what you'd expect in the real world. Also, in terms of the um, building design and stuff, like the models, skyboxes, all of that, Human Revolution was way out there. They ran with it. And Mankind Divided has some impressive locations. There's One of the earliest missions is set in a place called um, the Utilet Complex, or Gollum City, as some people call it. And it's it's impressive. I've seen it before. Whereas with Human Revolution, I hadn't seen anything like it. The Dawn engine, which is what this game's running off, is fantastic. This game does look beautiful. It just looks kind of... It lacks a certain distinction. This game so far feels like a rendition of a Deus Ex game rather than an, a f- sort of thoroughbred Deus Ex game. The sort of analogy that's been playing out in my mind is basically it's like seeing an excellent excellent cover band they can make the sound the song sound great but ultimately the personalities that attracted you to their music isn't there it's eminently play playable i'm looking forward to getting back to it but i'm hoping that it's going to just start to flourish a little bit i have a lot of criticisms about this game so far but i'm open to the fact that i'm not that far in but so far, it's having to do a lot to play catch up with Human Revolution.
I never asked for this. 